Hello children. Welcome back for yet another session with me. Today our topic is models. What exactly do we mean by models? Well, they are kind of uh, helping words, helping whom? They are helping the verbs. Let's see how. Suppose I give you a word playing. Playing, this is which part of speech? Well, it is a verb. Now, suppose I add up a sentence to that. She is playing. You will say is is a helping verb. It's an auxiliary verb. Well, absolutely right. This is called an auxiliary verb or a helping verb. Is is helping the verb playing. Suppose I put up yet another word. Let's see. Let's just pick up play and not the complete thing. Let me give you the word play. This is a verb again. That's a, a verb without an ing. It's in present form. Play. And if I add up a sentence to this, she can play. Now do you see this can is also helping the verb. This is some way or the other. It is helping the verb and telling us that she, she which is a pronoun, it can be for any uh, female, she can play. That is something that she can do. Right. Now this since can is also helping the verb. It is a, uh, it is a helping verb. But what kind of a helping verb is this? This is a model. Now, what is the difference between uh, the modal auxiliary verb and just an auxiliary verb? Suppose the words like, uh, let's say, let me, let me just pick up yet another helping verb. Say it's be. Be can change to being. Suppose I pick up have. Have can also be added. An ing can be added and a word can be made there. Ings can be added. Es, ed, whatever. Add, it can be added. But... Uh, in case of modals, nothing can be added. No letters can be added to the modal itself. The word itself is complete. You cannot add anything to a modal. So a modal is actually a modal auxiliary verb or helping verb. There. Now there are lots and lots of modals that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. We come across uh, many of them. They give us uh, actual mood, whether it's a question which is being asked or whether it's a tone in which it is being asked us. So modal gives us exactly the expression in which form it is picked up. They can be an advice, they can be in su a suggestion somewhere, they can be used as a question somewhere and lots and lots more such things. They can be uh, like when you need to seek permission in a polite manner, when you want to tell somebody something uh, then also a modal can be used. Let's go through the different models and see in which expressions they are used and an example sentence related to them. The first and the most common one that we pick up is the general one which we generally pick up and we use it so very often is must. You must understand the topic very well. Must. Now, must talks about a strong compulsion, a strong obligation that has to be followed. Now, what do we mean by an obligation? Something which is very necessary and it has to be done. So, that's an obligation. That's a compulsion of something that you need to follow. It can also be a logical condition which is being put up, a uh, conclusion, a logical something related. If something happens, then this might happen. This must happen. For example, he must be very tired. He's working all day long. So that's a conclusion. He must be tired. It is understood that that person must be tired because he has been working. Right. So what is the concluding part of it, the whole condition? That is since he had been working since morning. So he must be tired by now. So must is a model which talks about a strong obligation or it talks about a conclusion for something another one is must not yet a very common one we do pick up uh, this also quite often this is used to show something 
which something must not be done or taken up or maybe it's a prohibition from doing something. Prohibition is to stopping you from doing something ahead, right? You must not go out late in the evening must not so that is a model which is model which is picked up uh, in a negative or uh, stopping you for something from from doing something let's take another one and see uh, can well we generally use this uh, when we need to ask a question or something that you can uh, when which, something which is being able to do it so you can do something and most often uh, the children, they quite often, they make a mistake. Uh, when they enter a class, they come up with the sentence, Ma'am, can I come in? Well, it is the ability. You can definitely come in. But when you are taking a permission, when you're seeking permission from somebody, in that case, can is not the correct model to be used. Instead, you must use the model may. May I come in when you're seeking permission? What exactly is the difference between may I come in and can I come in? Well, may is you're asking somebody for permission that whether the person can come in or not. And can I come in is the ability that you're showing. Yes, that is some ability that you can definitely do. But when seeking permission, it's always a may that we need to pick up. Okay, so can exactly tells us, uh, as I said, the ability of something of your uh, do being able to do something that's an ability another thing is can can be used for seeking permission for asking permission or for giving permission also for that matter like uh, when a child asks ma'am may i come in the teacher can say yes you may come in yes you can you can do something like that so the person can enter okay the next one which we can pick up is could well uh can I do this? Could I do this? This is generally used in the past form of can. Can is the present form and could goes up to the past form. But at the same time, it's a probability of something happening also. He could come. I mean, the, you're not very sure of the person coming in. So he could come. It's just a probability. Could could be used there also. Yet another place to use could is... In the present form uh, also, but in a very polite way. It's more politer when you are uh, speaking to somebody and wanting to be very polite to them. Then also you can use the word could. Uh, could I do this for you? So that's a, a polite way to speak it out. Going ahead with our next one. Let's pick up may. Okay. As I said, it is a politer way of seeking permission. May I come in? It's a polite permission that you need from someone. So the word may, you begin with may I come in. So that's one polite way of using it. Yet another, uh, uh, another use of may can be uh, for again a probability of something. It may rain today. You're not very sure, but it may rain today. Similar one is might. Similar with me, we use might also. Might is yet again used in a politer form. It goes uh, quite similar with me. Uh, me uh, is again taking permission, whereas might is politer permission, even more politer. Might I do this for you? So that's being even more polite to somebody. Like I might go on that. That's a probability again. I might go on a holiday uh, next weekend so maybe uh, there are chances for the person to go at the same time there are chances the person might not go right so might is again used as a probability coming up to our next model we come with okay let me just rub off these so that i can put on a few more one after the other need not the next one which i'd like to explain to you people are need not well need not is something which is not a compulsion for example if i tell you you need not write the words uh, three times so that's again uh, an option for you you can either write it three times or you might not read, uh, write it three times it's it is a open option which is given to you need not it's not compulsory for you to write it you have to write that's a compulsion but you need not write it's not a compulsion it's up to you whether you want to write it three times or you don't want to write the word, words three times 
right so need not is basically a lack of compulsion it does not uh, it's a lack of necessity it's not forcing you to do something in uh, that uh, that it's not forcing you that you have to put it up and you have to write it in that way in that case when there is a probability of doing or not doing then this model can be used it can be used very easily need not next one coming up is should pretty often regularly we are using this word should or instead of should we use ought no, ought to now should and ought well basically they mean the same thing initially ought used to be used quite often these days should is more frequently used you ought to that means this is something which is being uh, an obligation it is compulsory you should do this. again this can be used in the form of an advice like uh, for example i can tell you you should go through my video once in a while you should it's it's an advice that i'm giving you you should uh, subscribe to my video so that you can get regular updates for your uh, sessions of little english ones with me so that's an advice that i can give you you ought to do this that's again an obligation again something which is being told that you ought to you should it's a general suggestion you ought to take care of your health that is something which is again an advice in a for your betterment it will be happening let's try for another one it's a another reason for this uh, can be it's coming up to a logical conclusion now how uh, in a logical conclusion well he ought to stay uh, he ought to be um, he ought to be very tired or uh, he's been working he should be very tired since he's been working since a long time so that's a again a probability that you're talking about that that can happen that since he's been working the whole day he should be tired by now right let's try for another uh, model be able to moving on to our next one be able to very simple you should be able to do this again we are using should as well as be able to so both are being taken up together be able to my father can lift heavy things will be able to lift heavy things as he is a strong man so he's concluding with a con taking out a conclusion of something since he is a strong man he will be able to lift heavy things right so be able to is yet another one that we picked up okay now um coming up to yet another helping verb which is a model which is very very frequently used and that is will well will is a promise which is being done told or said i will teach you models this is a promise that is being told to you all i will now this is uh, again a promise a permission request also at times it can be taken now in what sense uh, can it be taken for a permission request let's see i will complete my work if you allow me to go uh, for a movie i will complete my work before you allow me to go for a movie so this is a promise at the same time it's a kind of a condition that i'm putting up it's for surety that i will be doing it right so here again uh, will can be used in the form of a promise i will do this for you i am going to do this for you so here is will with a promise permission or a promise request the next one that we come up to is would again yes this can be used as a part uh, past uh, form also but here would was uh, picked up in the form of a prediction kind of a thing or it's kind of a doubting something whether it would it would happen if you do this this would happen something uh, kind of a uh permission also it can uh, sorry it can you could uh, take it up as a permission or you could take it up as an offer also i would do this for you if you give me a pen maybe i'll lend you i would lend you my book so it's a kind of an offer also that you can give would you like to have some tea here again you are offering something would you like to have some tea so that's a model which is used to ask something in a well taking permission 
and giving an offer tea coffee would you like tea or coffee that's an offer that you are giving okay we have yet another one which is shall generally shall comes with i and uh, though it's a promise permission a promise permission now what do we mean by a promise permission i shall give you a book on your birthday i shall give you a book on your birthday now this is a promise which i'm making but i am permitting you that you will be given a book right so it's a promise permission at the same time i shall it's a more politer way of volunteering yourself at the same time giving the permission for the same okay let's uh, see a few more just a handful more coming up to used to now used to is used in the form of a past habit now uh, i used to read plenty of books in my childhood i used to that's a past habit which i'm talking about okay so mm, this model is generally helping us to talk about our past uh, habits that we have been putting up another sentence i used to play here every day there was some a beautiful garden i used to play here every day used to come used to that's a habit that i have been doing in my past so used to is used as in the past form okay coming up to our next one is need to need to as the word says itself it is a necessity it is very very important it is actually very uh, necessary to do something then you need to you need to sign the form before moving out right so something that is very very important that needs to be done you need to understand things before working upon them right so that there in that case we are talking about a necessity of something okay our next one is have to or had to have to or in the past form had to now this is again uh, when i'm talking about some kind of uh, an obligation or necessity or compulsion of something you have to understand the formula you have to know the formula before you solve your sum similarly had to i had to do something before doing something right so that's a compulsion that's an obligation that you are putting forward last but not the least uh, i would love to give this one is dare now as this word says dare that's a daring thing you do dare is something which you are giving a warning to somebody you dare not uh, bully the young children right so that's a kind of a warning that has been given so this word dare is also used as a model giving a warning kind of a uh, feeling or giving a warning to the other person for example you dare not touch my books without my permission you dare not let that if something uh, which you are told not to do and you still do it then you will be responsible for your consequences so you dare not do something which you are not allowed to well these were a few of uh, uh, more or less uh, all the models that we have been using so far in our day to day to day lives and the exact meaning of these models should be very clear to you by meaning i mean by the expression in which they are used when to be used when to use a politer model when to be very straightforward when to give you a warning when to dare for something when to give you an an obligation or permission so by now after this uh, by the end of this video i hope you are very very clear with the different expressions of the different models that we have been using well that's it for this session thank you so much